Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Slevin back at it with another Berserk video. Since the release of Chapter 363, we've had some compelling material to look over. In this video, I wanted to reflect and talk about the payoff of the time spent on Elfhelm. So go ahead and click that subscribe button and notification bell to be on top of Berserk discussions when released on the channel. Now let's get into why I clicked on this video. Yo, yo. After reading chapter 363, I think it's safe to say that we'll be moving on from Elfhelm soon. Now that we've gotten some clarity and Casca has gotten her mind back. Well, slightly. With that being said, I started thinking about the things that went down on this fairy land and how it has paid off with the band of the guts. Shout out to Javon1007 for that name. It's pretty cool. So how has Elfhelm paid off other than for Casca's mind you might be asking? Alright, let's recall what happened thus far since the crew stepped foot onto the island. First things first, upon setting foot on the island, we get reassurance from Yzma's mother that the island has a different flow of time, as a warning not to linger for too long or time will fly in the outside world, which confirms that when the crew leaves, some months or even years will pass. We will likely see a huge change in characters like Salat, Rickert, and Erika grow from a time skip. For Sherke, we see her finally finding camaraderie among the young witches and finding tutelage under the gurus and the flower storm monarch. Although being among Guts, Isidro, and having Farnese as a student has allowed her to enjoy outside company, stepping foot on Elfhelm has given her a sense of home as she once did with Flora in the forest of the spirit tree. Especially when it comes to Morta, exposing her to non-traditional methods of using magic, not to mention learning here and there sprinkles of Flora's origins as she explores the island. Then there's Isidro. Although he's prone to cause mischief, being on Elfhelm has helped him hone that side of him as a weapon. We see how his dual wielding skill using the salamander bestowed by Flora became an extension of his left arm. Not only that, but it seems the atmosphere has increased his agility. We see this especially in the latest chapter, as he jumps and swings from branches maneuvering attacks, especially since learning of how Elfhelm's atmosphere lacks the presence of Barite elementals who are the stand-in for gravity and berserk universe. Isma, since learning and embracing her identity as a Mero, seems to have developed the ability to befriend wild, fantastical beings like Kelpies and woodland creatures. We haven't seen any development from Serpico, Azan, and Roderick as of late, but hopefully in near future chapters. Lastly, as a recap, we have come to learn the deep history of the original bearer of the Berserker armor, Skull Knight. Chapters 361 through 63 have given us answers pertaining to the intimate relationship between King Geysrick and Danon. Most importantly, the climax of what drove them apart a thousand years ago at the hands of Void and the previous God Hand. Yo, Elfhelm has been a trip, literally. I can't wait to see what happens in the next chapter. With the Moonlight Child making his presence known to Guts, I wonder what will come of this. Will Guts embrace him? Will he reveal himself to be part of Femto? Will Guts recognize him as his lost child? Will this be the healing moment that brings Casca back to Guts' arms? Who knows? All I know is that you should leave a like for your boy and subscribe to the channel for upcoming content. You know the vibes. It's Kazuku Slevin. Appreciate you.